So my brethren, we were having troubles, wars, rumors of wars. Earthquakes in diverse places, perplexed the time, distress between nations. They don't know what's going to take place next. But are we thankful tonight that we do know what's going to take place next? The Lord Jesus Christ shall come the second time in glory. Every name that written in the Lamb's book of life shall rise with their loved ones to meet the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a marvelous thing. That's the reason we say our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood with righteousness. Amen. All around the soul gives way. He's our hope and stay. Now, then all to these visions, he showed him just where the nations would be standing. He showed him how that there were so many years depending yet on the Jews. He said the Messiah shall come. He'll prophesy in the 70th weeks, which is three and a half years. In the midst of it, he'll be cut off, which is seven years. Seventy weeks is determined for thy people. Seven years of prophecy to the Jews. He said a Messiah, the priest, shall come and prophesy in the midst of the 70th week. Will it be cut off? In the abomination, make a desolation shall stand in his place. And they tread down the walls of Jerusalem, Gentiles, for a time, time, and dividing of time. Now, when Messiah comes, Jesus, he preached exactly three and a half years and was cut off for a sacrifice. Amen. The daily obligation was taken away, and the desolate, the abomination that make a desolation, the Muslim of Omer, was stood today in the place of the Holy Temple. Amen. The mosque of Omer stands exactly where the temple stood. And he said if they would tread down the walls of Jerusalem, over Jerusalem, until the Gentile dispensation be finished. But at the end of the Gentiles, there will still be three and a half years yet to the Jews. Now, notice one of the most striking things of prophetic history. I don't claim to know the prophecy of the Bible, but this is like reading a newspaper. Or claim. And what we read here, we know is the truth. Notice, 2,500 years, the Jews has been scattered to every nation under heaven. As God hardened Pharaoh's heart, bringing him back, he hardened Hitler's heart, Mussolini's heart, and so forth, till he strolled them back to Palestine. Coming back, they have made him a nation again. And on May the 6th, 1947, the Jewish flag was raised over Israel for the first time for 2,500 years. The oldest flag in the world was raised for the first time in 2,500 years. And he said in the last days he'd raise up an ensign over Jerusalem, showing that the time is at hand. And notice, here not long ago, I seen a prophetic reel played from over there, and they're bringing in those Jews by the thousands, by airplanes you see in the paper and so forth. Look at Life magazine's been packing it. Thousands of Jews returning, and they asked and said, what are you returning for? Old crippled people packing them on their backs, their little young ones were, said, are you coming back to the homeland to die? Said, no, we're coming back to see the Messiah. Amen. Jesus said, when you see the fig tree putting forth its buds and all the other trees putting forth their buds, know that time is nigh or spring is nigh, summer. So when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption's drawing nigh. There's only one solid thing in all no one's stand. That's the rock of Jesus Christ. We receive a kingdom that cannot be moved. And in this day when everything else is falling, we have a solid foundation. The Lord Jesus Christ. Come into it, friends. It's a shelter in a time of storm. What a marvelous thing. He's seen all this coming to pass. We see the Jews now. The Bible said that Jerusalem and it would blossom as a rose. And how they have irrigated that land. And they also, the prophet spoke and said, that day that water will come from the north. There was no water there then, no springs there then. But in the last few years, there's a gusher come up. Amen. As water in the valleys, 
And they're irrigating as one of the greatest agriculture spots for its size in the world. And all these great chemicals right in the Dead Sea, there's enough chemicals down in the bottom of it that all the wealth of the world could buy. The chemicals, uranium and everything else, right in the bottom of the Dead Sea, which now belongs to Israel. Fig tree putting forth its bud. Not only that, but the other trees are putting forth its bud. The communist is putting forth buds. The antichrist is putting forth buds. And the church of God is putting forth buds. She's blooming out into her power again. The palmer worm eat part of it. The canker worm eat part of it. The hook worm eat part of it. The caterpillar eat part of it. But God said it'll live again. She's putting forth buds now. The trees are putting forth buds. Daniel foresaw it and rejoiced. Now, at this time, he said, and at that time, the 12th chapter, and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince and stand up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Oh, my. Aren't you glad your name is on his book? When he stand you over here, saw him come to the ancient of days, whose hair was as white as wool. And he opened up the books, and they were judged every man out of the books. The great white throne judgment. Now, Daniel is given this assurance at the end of the Gentile dispensation. Read the, when you go home and tomorrow, read the 11th chapter. You can see how the king of the north is coming down, which is nothing else but Russia, coming down to press against it like a whirlwind. And the great battle of Armageddon will be fought right there near the gates of Jerusalem. Notice, oh, I love this. And at that time, the people shall be delivered. Everyone that's been found written in the book, the Lamb's book of life. Michael, the great prince, shall stand up for what? For thy people. All right. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. When, when these times take place, and some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contentment, just as sure there's an everlasting life, there's an everlasting departure. It determines on how you treat Jesus Christ in your life. If you love him and born to get it, got his spirit, you've got everlasting life. If you don't, you have not everlasting life. If your name's written on the Lamb's book of life, you have immortal life. If it's not written there, you'll not be recognized. What is it? All those prophecies are fulfilled. Everything right down to this time. So my brethren, we're having troubles, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, perplexed of time, distress between nations. They don't know what's going to take place next, but aren't we thankful tonight? that we do know what's going to take place next. The Lord Jesus Christ shall come the second time in glory and majesty. Every man who written in the Lamb's book of life shall rise with their loved ones to meet the Lord. Amen. Oh, what a marvelous thing. That's the reason we say our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood with righteousness. All around my soul gives way. He's our hope and stay.